Beyond the Veil here at the Triad Theater in Yelm, Washington. I'm your host, Lady Jane. As I say, we, we, we lived there for many years, and I, I got very fond of the Russian people. I did many miracles. You know that they made me the patron saint of Russia? No. All really? of Russia, yes. Wow. Yes. And before the Bolshevik Revolution, every home had a picture of me. Oh. And every village and city had at least one church dedicated to Nicholas. Wow. That's how popular I was uh, for the amount of miracles that I did. I did a plethora of miracles there. So we stayed at uh, Korvatan Turi for, like I say, many centuries perfecting um, uh, what we had learned. But the men in black caught up to us because creating all those miracles were just travel. Now, when you say men in black, you're saying those... Um, who was the men in black? This was the order that the church had created to hunt us down. Okay, okay, like you a know, cabal today or... Exactly, I'm or, like the Jesuits. Oh, okay. And we didn't know it, but one day, arriving on our doorstep, were the elves that had come up from the Middle Earth and come to us to take us to their home inside the planet. Oh, as safety? The entrance ways through they the were North coming Pole. to rescue you, they, basically? Exactly, so that ah. we wouldn't be caught and murdered. We were really an embarrassment to this organization. Uh -huh. For the amount of miracles that I performed, you know, I, the fable that they had created, I, had done, I did that, you know, master much more than he had performed. Ah. So this was, an, I, we, we were both of an embarrassment. So that's how we went into the North Pole, and we, we still reside there today. You're so sweet saying an embarrassment and probably a threat, because if they were trying to capitalize on that, it was all their power, their magic, and there's somebody that's uncontrollable, such as you both. They needed to get you out of the picture, for yeah, sure. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, even uh, the Communist Party had a bit of a, challenge of trying to suppress us <laughs> oh wow yeah because yeah you're not supposed to believe in we still kept doing magic. miracles even yeah. though we were now in the uh inner earth and north pole we still continued doing miracles now in russia they they sort of called us uh, well myself father frost grandfather frost uh, because when I would come to their places, my beard would be so encrusted with ice. Ah. And so I was the figure of Grandfather Frost, uh, this magical being that comes at the winter solstice time. And my wife uh, was called Babushka. Ah. And she too would also be a gift giver at that time. So those are the legends, final legends that were created. Now the miracles are a little more subtle and, um, well... I guess one, if one does not believe in them, then they would be not real for them. But I'm trying to still imagine, though. So you're saying that you that these elves took you into the earth, because we're hearing all that stuff now about Antarctica and that underneath there's these incredible caverns and actually cities inside the earth. That's correct. So. You, there are many civilizations down there. Wow. And you, they took you via the North Pole area, and, and there was, what, a hole up there, and you... Your NASA has many pictures of the opening, and, and most, I, I, unless you get only the ones that have been airbrushed. Okay. But uh, there's a, it's an opening. I mean, it looks like a, a giant cookie cutter, but the Earth is so massive that if you were going, it's like when you're driving down through the plains, and you never see that you're going to go this way around the earth. Mm -hmm. It's so massive. It's a gradual, gradual turn. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you did an entrance. As you get closer to the Arctic Circle, it becomes warmer. Mm -hmm. wow. another, another truth that's been hidden from the people. Ah. As a matter of fact, um, one of your polar explore, explorers in his diary mentioned that he had visitors come from the North Pole. And um, what was his name now? I'm trying to recall his name. Was it Bird, or was it, um, oh, I can't 
get uh, Admiral Byrd you're talking about? No, so Admiral Byrd was a famous explorer. Antarctica. He, uh -huh. did, he did fly into the inner Earth. Uh, uh -huh. through the, see, there's an opening at the top. All the energy, and you have this pattern throughout everything that's crea uh, through creation. Energy flows in to the top and comes around and flows out and comes around. And around the sphere. If you slice an apple in half, you can actually see the lines and you can see how that works. That's how materialization of, mater of, of, of creation happens. Ah. And even around you or I or anything, we have this magnetic uh, and gravitational field around us. And it goes, once it's done properly, our brains were altered so we wouldn't work it properly unless we are trained to. But Everyone has it, and uh, everything works that way. So Admiral Byrd went to the opening at the Antarctica, and his diary shows that he was flying. He was on a reconnaissance trip, and he was flying, and all of a sudden started getting green, mm. and, and the snow was all melting, and he got greener and greener, and then he saw a, a city of sorts and landed his plane and was greeted by these very tall beings. It's in his diary, so th that was a proof right there. So, um, so you were saying that there were actually tall beings that greeted Admiral Byrd, and um, can you go into that a little bit more? Well, I, I'm, I'm not quite certain of the story exactly, only that's what I have uh, understood. However, it is known that there it was a Nazi base down in Antarctica, and Admiral Byrd led a whole fleet down there to um, eradicate this, uh, right after the war, the, your Second World War. And uh, the Nazis had actually their flying, you, uh, what you call flying saucers, they had perfected. And they totally annihilated that fleet. Uh, almost, I believe, all of the aircrafts from the aircraft carrier were eliminated, and they lost a lot of people and a lot of ships as well. Um, so, and actually, I believe if you uh, dig a little, if it's not s destroyed by now, but there is some footage by the Russians of the Project High Jump, was called. And it actually shows the crafts uh, shooting down one of the aircrafts, these saucers, and uh, flying between the cameraman and the mast of the ship. So there's evidence that they existed down there, these Nazis, in the inner Earth. Interesting. Were you saying who, um, who greeted, who was greeting them from the North Pole? You said some tall beans. Who? The North Pole. Mm, no, Ad, this wasn't Admiral Byrd. This was um, another Arctic explorer. Like I say, I, I can't recall his name. I'm very old. Um, but in his diaries, it was mentioned that he had visitors. And, of course, the reason given is that he was probably losing his mind. He was alone. And all these other uh, explorers that were with him had perished. And he was still, uh, you know, the last survivor. And in his documents or in his diary, he just wrote that. that he kept it. So they say he must have been hallucinating. Wow. But he wasn't. Mm -hmm. he, did, he did receive some visitors. And if, had he left his hovel and went further to the north, <clears throat> he would have gotten to warmer lands. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, this is so fascinating. And, but I'm really needing to ask this one last question because I know you're a busy man probably and you've got a lot of things to have to do because it is the beginning of My December. busy season. Yes, yes, as they would say. But of course, I'm only the delivery man. Uh, that's right. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> that's right, or the delivery guy. Santa, why, excuse me, uh, Nick, what brought you to Yelm, Washington this time? Well, I had heard uh, that you had in this uh, little town of yours a, a huge festival of UFOs. Oh, no. Yes, we did. Yes, our first UFO festival. And I like the fact that you're a triad theater. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> it is. I am very much uh, associated with the, uh, the Trinity. Beautiful. <laughs> so triad was uh, close to my heart. So... Yes, I, I decided to come there, and then I heard rumors of a, a Nicholas movie, so I thought perhaps your theater, that you might have that film playing. Oh, my God. Lucky for me that you heard that, and 
unfortunately, I don't. I don't have that particular film yeah. playing right now, but the fact that it drew you in, we're really honored that you stopped by. This was amazing. I just wanted to make sure that how much truth was in it and how much false was in it. Yes, well, I, <laughs> I'll tell you, if I can get my hands on this film, I will definitely put it on and hope that you will, through your uh, psychic abilities or whatever, that you'll know that we are... Or send me an elf mail. Emails are very quick. Oh, my God. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you send so much. Send it to Tinseltop. He's my head elf in charge of production. Tinseltop. Oh, my Tinsel God. Top. Oh. If you can remember that name. Oh, I believe me, I'm going to remember a lot of this, a lot of this. Well, thank you, you guys, so much for tuning in. I want you to decide for yourself about this extraordinary interview and is he for real or what? I go, you know, he's blowing my mind. I'm pinching myself, I feel you. Yes, he seems pretty damn real. Thank you. Good night.